So I've just lost 20 kilos in nine weeks. Uh, looking at that photo there, many people are probably shocked thinking, what the f how did that happen? And so many people have been following me um, on social media as this has happened since the beginning of the year. I've um, made a decision and I thought I'd put this clip together because so many people have been asking you to tell you exactly how I did it and why I did it. Um, and for me, it's actually very similar to language learning. Uh, and so for people who are used to watching my clips because of uh, language stuff, hopefully this will be beneficial to you too because it's, there are a lot of the same concepts involved. Okay, so let's have a look at last year. You probably remember a clip that I put out around August, just after I had spinal surgery. You can see in here I had these cervical, um, uh, was it, where, they, where they cut the discs out. Uh, they call it, was it ACDF and fused my spine together. And when they did that, or one, I, ever since almost the beginning of last year, I was progressively losing my arm, use of my arm. And so that was bad. I couldn't do much physical stuff. And so no exercise. And then compounded on that, I started um, eating more bread. We'd go out and so there might be a glass of wine and cocktails and my weight started to go up and up and up and up and up. Uh, come about November and I hit around 96 kilos. Now that's huge. Um, now I was thinking, you know, am I just going to accept this? I got to that weight and I thought, holy crap, I'm probably about 20 kilos over what I should be. And it was very tempting to just say, oh, look, it's too far to, to try and lose 20 kilos again. Maybe I'll just be happy with who I am and um, I'll go out and buy a new wardrobe to suit me rather than just wearing the same old, you know, increasingly large t-shirts and um, having to buy bigger and bigger jeans. And then my wife, my lovely wife, uh, Wimindra, said to me, well, that's not great, is it? One, you're not taking care of yourself, but two, you know, we, we have an image as well. What's that say about you? And she had a point. And I thought to myself, how many old fat people do I see around me? Like around my weight, I was getting really obese. And the reality was that there's not many because obesity, being overweight leads to so many health problems, which could end up ending in death. And with my little daughter just born to, I want to be stick around for her. And it was getting scary. It's not just a thought, but I was having head spins, blood pressure issues, and a whole range of issues. And especially since my spinal surgery, my weight was compounding things onto my spinal cord and the spine was potentially going to give way in other places. And so I made a decision. Now people laugh because New Year's Eve, now you can see what I ate on New Year's Eve and I made a commitment, no, the next day I'm going to start. Now about um, 10 years back, I lost a lot of weight then and I used the Duken program and I learned a lot about my body, um, how my body burns fat and actually how some things go contrary to what we'd been taught about nutrition. Uh, over the years though, since this Duken program, um, there's been a lot of research. There's a lot of people into keto, intermittent fasting. And so what I did is I did all, my, all of my research um, based on the stuff I'd learned with Duken, but then all these new research um, that's gone into um, insulin resistance. Um, what Dr. Bickman uh, has got some great stuff out there and just looking and learning and what I realized. So basically the way Dukin worked, it's a four phase project that goes throughout your life. It's not just a diet. So the first phase is this attack phase where you go solely on protein and you get your body to shock itself into um, ketosis. Um, but you still get fiber in there. You get oat bran, you can have yogurts and stuff like that, but you cut the fat out. Um, now, what I learned later on is that actually there are some good fats and bad fats. And so this time around, I've been adding um, certain fats just to add to it, still keeping the fiber there. And then in the second phase, after seven days, once you're in ket ketosis, um, what I did was basically set my target weight. So I wanted to get down to 76 kilos, which I am now. Um, and I would have one day full protein. And then the next day I would be full protein and good veg. So broccoli, asparagus, whatever it was. Um, I'd be eating eggs too, some cheese. I have latte, still have dairy, but my body's still um, lost. 
Now, the good thing was, is because say by day three, day four into this, um, I've got so much great protein inside of me. And, for, and yes, it's meat protein. I like eating meat. I'm sorry to those who might be offended. But for me, meat works for me and it really helped here. And so um, having so much protein, I would eat at 7 a.m. and 11 a.m., just two spots. And I'd be full for the rest of the day, which brought me another benefit. And that's the benefit of intermittent fasting. So I'd done a lot of reading on it. And they said, if you can get like a 16 hour window, fantastic. And so just by default, because I had so much protein and I was satiated, um, intermittent fasting was then a thing. And so I would be burning, and I still am, um, 300 to sometimes 750 grams a night. Now, to keep things flowing, I keep a lot of water, so up to five liters of water. We have this tea here in Thailand, it's a herbal tea. Um, I'd take that every other day also, and that helps to cleanse things out so we don't have um, problems with the plumbing. But basically, yeah, up until today now, um, I'm down to my goal weight. Uh, it took about nine weeks to drop 20 kilos, and now I'm just sort of keeping it around there. I uh, might go a little bit further, and I'm going to push into the consolidation phase. Now, the Dukan program actually has a great um, formula for how you work out how long you should be in consolidation, and starting to bring some carbs back in, breads, fruits. Um, I had zero fruit during this whole time, zero alcohol. And I'll be getting into um, a point where my body can actually start to take the carbs and not react against it. Now, just a couple of things. Some people have said, well, could I just do it some days of the week or I'm just going to do this part of it? For me, I tried a ton of different things, different permutations didn't work. Um, and the fact was, is basically you become a laboratory, a human laboratory. And so once you're in ketosis, um, it's a chemical disposition. And so as soon as I introduce, say, sugar in there, even a piece of fruit, bang, that stops. And I would notice it the next day and, it, and, and there'd be no weight loss. And it would then take another couple of days to knock me back in, and in again. And so I made a conscious decision, no alcohol, um, no sugars, no fruits. And you know what, though, as I got into it, after about the first week, zero cravings, always feeling satiated, so always feeling full, but not just fullness of body, but I was, I've just been at peace. Um, there's been stressful things with work and, and whatever, as there usually is, but the peace and, and, I don't know, just something inside me, the chemistry is just working. And the other thing is you get these great dopamine hits because every morning when you look at the scales, you think, yes! Um, and I've achieved this goal without ever feeling hungry, ever feeling I'm, I don't have to have these rabbit food breakfasts where I feel like I'm punishing myself. And one last thing, um, some people might be upset hearing this, but because of my neck, I can't exercise. Um, I can't lift weights and just the slightest movement to the wrong way um, can really screw me up. And so while there's a little bit, basically zero exercise. Now, exercise is good for you. It keeps you fit. But I'm telling you, just use me as a, as a, case in point that the human body has been able to bring itself back into balance, back to what my weight should be. And I haven't actually exercised through this whole thing. Haven't done any cardio, haven't gone out running, maybe walk a little bit, playing with uh, Jordan, my, my little baby daughter. Um, but basically this weight loss is totally due to chemistry, not physical exertion. Um, for some people, you might choose the, the, the exercise route and that's fantastic, but I'm just telling you what worked for me. Um, I don't want, I know there's some people out there probably screaming, it's weird. Some people feel like you almost have to do some kind of penance through either starving yourself or, you know, exercising until you're almost, you know, dead on the ground to be able to lose the weight. But just doing what I'm doing, I eat a ton. I, I eat probably 2000 calories to 3000 calories a day and I'm still dropping um, 300 to 700 grams a day. Now that I've got closer to my goal weight, that um, per day amount has dropped, but I'm feeling great, um, can fit back into all of my old clothes, time to get a new wardrobe in the small stew size. And my maid today has actually gone out, I found and thrown out all of my big clothes so I can't get fat even if I wanted to, because uh, I've got no clothes to wear. Anyway, I hope this has helped. Where's the link with language? Well, 
Just like our body knows how to be the right weight, as long as we feed it the right stuff, our brains know how to learn languages. Um, we just have to have the right input and that base knowledge. And for me, it was a new education in knowledge um, about nutrition uh, and what the body needs. And for language, for a lot of people, it's, un it's actually a new education of actually what you need and how your brain processes and learns languages or acquires languages even. And so there are some parallels. So I, I know this is off my normal language topic, but I hope it's been beneficial and there are some takeaways for everyone, whether you're wanting to get healthy, get back into um, the right track with your weight, or you want to learn a language. It's all in the mind and your body will follow. I'm Stuart J. Raj.